One of China's largest shadow banks, Zhangji Enterprise Group, just recently filed for bankruptcy after revealing to investors that it owed at least $31 billion more than it actually had. Now, you might be wondering exactly what a shadow bank even is. Well, according to the Chinese government's central bank, they define China's shadow banking system as credit intermediation involving entities and activities outside the regular banking system. And they also note that it could possibly be a source of systemic risk or regulatory arbitrage. To simplify that a little more, the best way to describe a shadow bank is that they are unregulated financial companies that do not have the same oversight from regulators that traditional banks do. They operate in the shadows, so to speak, which is where the name comes from. Examples of companies that fall under the shadow banking umbrella can include things like hedge funds, private equity funds, mortgage lenders, and other financial entities that have less regulatory oversight. And in China, shadow banking has become a big business. China's shadow banking sector is believed to now be valued at over $3 trillion, which is about the size of France's entire economy. This massive size has fueled concerns that failing shadow banks like Zhangji Enterprise Group could create contagion in the world's second largest economy and potentially the global economy as a whole. There are several unique factors for why China's shadow banking sector has grown out of control in recent times. During the 2008 global financial crisis, China's government injected broad stimulus support into the economy, and the extra money floating around created a major increase in lending activity. A lot of this money eventually made its way into China's property and real estate market, as loans were given to property developers like Evergrande and Country Garden to fund development projects. But like most things in communist China, the banks are ultimately owned and controlled by the government. This means that all bank lending in China is heavily regulated and restricted by the government. And China's government was growing more and more uneasy with the real estate bubble that was forming in the country after the stimulus injection, as speculators bought homes as investments and real estate developers continued to take out loans to fund more expansion. In an attempt to curb the rapidly growing real estate bubble, China's government began to discourage and limit bank lending to property developers in particular. In addition, since China's banking system is controlled by the Chinese government, the loans that Chinese banks extend are often to enterprises that are owned by the Chinese state itself. When combining this preferential treatment given to companies that are owned by the government with the strict lending regulations and limits on Chinese bank loans, this ultimately means that many privately owned small and medium-sized businesses in China could not obtain loans and lines of credit through traditional banking. They were a neglected and underserved population. And that's where shadow banking comes in, with many private Chinese businesses and property developers unable to get funding through the regular banking system. There was a massive and growing opportunity for financial businesses that were willing to offer loans to these particular demographics. Unregulated financial institutions that did not have the same restrictions as Chinese banks grew exponentially as credit-starved real estate developers and other businesses were desperate to get loans from wherever they could. And investment trust companies in the shadow banking sector were able to capitalize on this opportunity and easily attracted investors to fund these loans to property developers. Investment opportunities in China are often more scarce. Investing in real estate in China is incredibly expensive, and the stock market in China has experienced major downturns. So middle class and upper middle class Chinese investors looking for higher yield investment opportunities would often give their money to investment trust companies. These companies would then pool the investor money and make loans and investments on their behalf. But this is where the problems come into play for Zhangji Enterprise Group and other Chinese shadow banks. These companies frequently had provided loans to the country's giant property developers, and their exposure to the Chinese real estate sector was massive. The growth of China's real estate bubble is well documented, and Chinese property developers had taken on extreme levels of debt that were unsustainable, 
When the Chinese real estate market began to take a hit and housing sales began to dwindle, this was a death sentence for many overleveraged and indebted property developers like Evergrande, who were then unable to pay their debts. Since Zhangji Enterprise Group had lent so much money to real estate developers, and these loans quickly turned bad, the company began to miss payments to the investors in its investment products. After the company had to admit to its investors that they owed $31 billion more than they actually possessed in assets, the shadow bank was then eventually forced to declare bankruptcy. But Zhangji Enterprise Group is definitely not the only shadow bank that's facing these issues. Most other trust companies face similar exposure to the real estate sector in China. And some analysts say that many Chinese trust companies have actually downplayed and not fully disclosed their exposure to ailing property developers. It's believed that the shadow banking sector as a whole may have over three times the exposure to property developers than what has actually been publicly stated. After Zhangji Enterprise Group's struggles were revealed, things quickly began to unravel. Investors who were not receiving their payments began to protest outside the company headquarters, and all forms of protest are heavily discouraged and quickly suppressed in communist China. The Chinese Communist Party quickly launched a criminal investigation into the company after the missed payments, and two of its top executives disappeared soon after. With China's economy continuing to deteriorate and the country's real estate crisis spreading, there is concern that many other shadow banks may follow suit and fail. Experts say that many Chinese investment trusts are deeply distressed right now and could likely fail in the near future. A series of these failures could very well continue to spread contagion throughout China and further damage the world's second largest economy. China's government has been attempting to control the implosion of the country's real estate bubble and the shadow banking sector to eliminate the systemic risks they pose. But this has also created a situation where the Chinese economy is quickly contracting and slowing to a crawl. Much of China's explosive growth the past several decades has been fueled by its property sector, with that sector alone accounting for around a third of the country's GDP. With the end of the country's unsustainable and debt-fueled property development, it's unclear if China will be able to find another avenue to maintain its economic growth. And it's very possible that it may never be able to fully recover to its past economic glory days. But be sure to let me know your thoughts on China's economy and the shadow banking sector in the comments below. And be sure to subscribe to the channel for more finance and business content. Thanks.